and that period in Vienna was, of course, one of the great periods of modern artistic history in terms of music, in terms of, music, in terms of opera, in terms yeah. of everything. I mean, to what extent did that climate, do you think, influenced you um, in your own life? The climate influenced me a great deal, both um, in, in the negative and the positive sense. Uh, recently, I had had occasion to talk about this. The Austrian government gave me uh, the highest honor they have to give in, in the arts and sciences. Uh, ironically, that's a cross. And um, when I accepted it, I said, uh, you know, I'll never forget, and, and I cannot and I will not, um, what drove me away from Austria. But by the same token, I also have to always remember that, that Vienna was the place where I learned to love the arts, I learned to love the theater, which became my life's work. So much of the discussion, and particularly about Jewish identity in Vienna in that period, was a very interesting period for mm. it because there are many who actually later claimed that in a sense, it was the Nazis who made Vienna's Jews Jews. That there were so many Jews who were kind of cosmopolitan, you know, Viennese who didn't identify. Didn't it's, apply to us. Our yeah. family was very Jewish long before the Nazis came. But it did apply, you're quite right, that definition would, would apply to some of my uh, school friends. We had in my class, it was a class of about 40 boys, 10 of them whom were Jews. Uh, I remember every single one of them, of them by name, and interesting, uh, something that doesn't happen in America, I cannot tell you the name of a single one of my non-Jewish classmates. Not one, we were never invited to their homes, they, never, they were never invited to ours, it was. There were separate existences that we, that we led side by side. And what year did you leave? 38. The Nazis came in in March of 38. It took us fully six months before we were able to leave. And so you were roughly for your 14? I was 13 when they came, I was 14 when we left. And were you kind of, were you fully aware of what was happening? Oh God, yes. Of course. Of course. Um, we, um, as I mentioned before, they we saw the German troops under our window. They were greeted with jubilation by the, by the local populace. Uh, after the hardware, the military hardware, not one shot was fired, of course. Uh, there were open limousines, and there was Goering, and then there was Hitler, right under our window. And um, we kind of looked from behind the curtain, Everybody else had their windows wide open to welcome the uh, the Germans. And um, within a couple of days after the school reopened, there was a general assembly, and the uh, uh, headmaster of the school made a speech. And he said, and I, I can quote, I mean, I could quote it to you in German as he said it, but this is what he said. If in the first joy and exuberance over the reunification with our German brothers, excesses should happen, we will not be inclined to stop them. It's a clear invitation. And uh, true enough, the boys from the older grades came and asked our classmates, the non-Jews, to point out who the Jews were. They pushed us out into the hall. We were roughed up, beaten up. I came home bloody. Uh, that that was the beginning of it. And uh, before long, uh, there were certain uh, laws. We couldn't go to movies. We couldn't go to the theater. We couldn't use the public parks, etc. Uh, and 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 we tried. We scrambled to get out of there. Uh, my father and I even started to, to study Spanish in case we got a visa to a Latin American country. Luckily, luckily, the British gave out very few 
uh, entry permits into what was then Palestine, um, was then a British protectorate. And they turned over those certificates, they called them, to the Jewish community, who in turn distributed them according to seniority in the Zionist movement. And my father had been a labor Zionist all his life, and he kind of had, he was at the head of the list. And we got one of those few coveted certificates, which allowed my father, my mother, and me to um, actually travel to Palestine legally. Uh, and we uh, we did that. We, we did on circuitous routes because, although it was very, you could go directly south from from Vienna, and and go, go to Italy very quickly. Uh, but the Austrian border guards uh, were known to have in, to be engaging in chicanery. Even if all your papers were in order, they could tear them up and send you back or whatever. So we went through Germany. Um, the Nazis had been in power there for five years, and they were more correct. If your papers were in order, they let you through. So we went from Germany to France, from France into Italy. And we caught a boat, uh, which deposited us at the harbor in Tel Aviv on the first day of Rosh Hashanah of 1938. 